The following podcast okay. may contain adult language and an abundance of salt. So get ready, nerds, because we're talking about the all-star Russian mafia man, Viggo Mortensen. <laughs> Welcome to the Salty Nerd Podcast. Today we're talking about Viggo Mortensen movies, and we're not talking about those cheesy Lord of the Rings things. We're talking his Russian assassin movies. That went full freaking Arnold for yeah, a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop it now! <laughs> kill me! Kill me now! Hey guys, thanks for joining us. We're talking Viggo Mortensen, and uh, he's a great actor, and he's in more movies than just Lord of the Rings. Although that's probably what the vast majority of people know him from. We are dedicating this episode to his filmography. I am joined, as always, by my fantastic panel of nerds. Matt Vader is here. Welcome, sir. Hey. Hey. How you doing? I'm doing all right, You doing okay? I'm getting in the mood. Are you drinking some vodka today? Yes. You drank a lot of vodka I, today. I need to go drink some more because the donut <laughs> soaked up all the fucking The vodka. donut and vodka? Yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> no, now you're, doing, now you're doing wow. worse, man. Now you're, just, you're getting your accents all fucked up. <laughs> but, you know, we got tattoos. I blame the vodka. We got tattoos. Yeah, we got tattoos in honor of mm. Eastern Promises. That's one of the movies. Jude looks freaking sick. Yeah, over. I look, look at that. badass. You do so look badass. I kind of want a neck tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> Kadish is the only party pooper who's not wearing tattoos today. I'm very anti-tattoos. <laughs> I don't like them. Kadish never joins on any of the fun I want to do, which is why I need more friends. <laughs> he's engaged to a woman who's got more tattoos that you can count. And he's anti-tattoo. <laughs> yeah, yeah Every strange. time I want to get a new tattoo, he's like... <sighs> I think he's anti-tattoo on his body. Probably. But anyway. He doesn't like him on me either. <laughs> Today's podcast, we're getting way off the rails already. Today's podcast, we're doing Eastern Promises, History of Violence, and Hidalgo. We are honoring Vigo Mortensen because we think he's freaking cool and he needs more attention. And we a, just like saying, it's Vigo. It's Vigo. It's Vigo. It's Vigo. It's Vigo. It's Vigo. Command me, Lord. So anyway, so stay tuned. We're going to be talking about those three movies. And uh, we're going to take a quick break. Listen to some sponsors. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. Hey, if you want to support the podcast, go to saltsnerdclub.com. We have a, great, a ton of great content over there. This month of February, we're doing Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Last month, we did... Somebody remind me. Doctor, Doctor Who. Doctor Who. <laughs> did you block it out? Is it, was it that traumatic? I was just like, oh, it's that stupid sci-fi show. The David no. Tennant guy. <laughs> oh, I'm, joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. Don't kill me. No, we had a ton of fun with our patrons over there talking about Doctor Who. Uh, before that, we have Foundation. There's a huge backlog library of content exclusive for members only. It's only $5 a month. It's a fantastic value, and we really appreciate the support. So if you can. And we keep making more. We, yeah, we're not going to stop. So if you can, head over to saltynearclub.com and uh, jump in and help support the podcast. All right, the first movie on our list today is Hidalgo. Take it away, Jude. What is this movie all, all about? All right, sir. 2004 Hidalgo, rated PG-13 with a runtime of two hours, 16 minutes. This had a budget of $100 million. What do you think this brought into the box office? 100 million bucks for this movie? Yes, sir. Wow. Um, I want to say it made money, but not enough to warrant like some kind of a franchise. It's probably, I'm going to say 200 million. B? I don't remember a lot of buzz about this movie. I remember the marketing. I but, do as well, but yeah. I don't, I'm going to say this movie probably didn't do great. So I'm going to say, what was the budget? You 100 said? million. 100. Um, 100 be, between like probably dollars. 60 and 70 million. That's it. Okay. You think it flopped? I'm, I'm probably completely wrong. $108 million. So it made its money back oh, and, a, and a little something to buy yourself something pretty. There you go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Take it away. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah, that's my job. Go okay. ahead, dude. Tell us what this movie is all about. Go ahead, dude. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's the full cut. It's hitting me real hard. It's 1890, and the white man is the good guy, huh. and the Indians are the bad guys. Frank Hopkins is both good guy and bad guy, but his horse is the best man. When the legend of his horse, Hidalgo, offends the Arabian Sheik, he challenges Frank's Mustang to join the cross-country desert race against 100 Arabian horses for glory, honor, and 100 Gs. Frank accepts and enters his horse, the first non-thoroughbred horse in history to compete, but there's more at stake than the purse. Nobody wants a half Lakota on a wild Mustang to best the greatest Arabian horses ever bred for this race. Everyone except for the Sheik and his daughter try to stop Frank and Hidalgo from completing the race. But when the Sheik's daughter is found after hours in Frank's hut, 
the Sheik has no choice but to cut his dick off. <laughs> Good thing the Sheik is a sucker for Wild West stories. Frank's tales delay his castration just long enough for the Sheik's daughter to get kidnapped. And the Sheik decides that if Frank can bring his, his daughter back safely, he'll let him keep his dick. <laughs> Frank and Hidalgo save the day, proving they're worthy of their manhood and of competing. They race off into the Arabian sunset toward either the finish line or death by desert. So I didn't remember a lot about this movie. I saw it a long time ago, probably when it first came out. And I, it just never really like struck me as a movie I'd need to go watch again. Mm -hmm. So I was happy that we finally picked it because we couldn't pick Vanishing Point, which was the, our other pick, but we couldn't, just couldn't find, we couldn't it, find anywhere. it anywhere. Yeah. And so we were like, all right, well, what else can we watch? We chose Hildago. I'm actually kind of glad we did because this movie was way better than I thought it was going to be. I had, favorite movie of the week. Really? Yeah. yeah. I had a this ton was the of, first watch for me. I had a first ton of fun with this movie. Too. It was like, it had some real serious tones to it, mm -hmm. especially with uh, the, um, the slaughter at Wounded Knee and all that kind of like, it's very, very serious movie. But then also has like this weird Indiana Jones yeah. vibe. And I was like, yeah. what the hell is going on? It's like an adventure movie. I'm yep. like, yeah. I completely forgot. It has a little bit of like Brendan Fraser's The Mummy yep. with like Indiana Jones and some cool, like, you know, a nice moral There's about the There's a kidnapping in the middle. It's we great. gotta go Scooby-Doo that shit. Yeah, it's a ton of fun. We got crazy, mean Arabian dudes on the, horses. The, dude, and, the cast and, the, and they're awesome outfits. Yeah. And, and the swords eagle. And yeah, and the quicksand. The quick, oh, yeah. the castration scene, which you mentioned in your great. synopsis, is hilarious. freaking hilarious. That dude was so amped to cut that dude's balls <laughs> off. He was like, "I have you have given me no choice." <laughs> He's like <laughs> the dude with the tools over here, like, "Oh, I can't wait to get onto those balls." <laughs> and, I, 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 yeah. and Vigo is like, "We didn't do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> we were just talking, man." Yeah, you know, I think this is gonna sound kind of stupid, but Vigo was like, he was like my. Probably the least favorite character of the, of the movie. Really? Yeah. I don't Who know. I don't know. Oh, I loved uh, the Sheik. What what the fuck's his the name? The old man? The old dude. Omar Sharif. Omar Sharif. No yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's, he's the same character he played in uh, 13, 13 Warriors or whatever. L literally the same character in every movie. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just, it's, he's, he's so good to me. I just, right I mean, on. don't get me wrong. Vigo was great. He was good in this movie. Um, this is my favorite movie of the week. I had a great time. Nice. It's, but it's. It's like it starts out as a Western, turns it into an Arabian adventure. Mm -hmm. And then we get some, you know, some history involved. And, you know, and, and uh, J. Jonah Jameson was like Wild Bill Hickok and stuff. Right? Yeah. It was just there was a lot of cool shit in this movie. It was yeah. super fun. It's, and I like the horse. The Hidalgo? horse was great. Hidalgo was awesome. He had some personality. He had some personality. Hidalgo was the hero of the oh, story. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. yeah. That horse wanted to win, man. Yeah. And, 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 um, just the, you know, when some bad stuff happens to the horse, you're like, oh, oh shit, yeah. you know. I thought it's like, oh no, they're not ending this movie this way. I was pissed uh -huh. when they when they fell in the pit and yeah, the trap. Yeah. And yeah, was it this was the first watch for you too. Yeah. Okay, yeah. me too. If if it was a, if it wasn't, I don't remember watching it before. Okay. But, right on. But yeah, so I mean, this was a this was our alternate pick, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm glad we found it because it's my favorite one, right on, for sure. Yeah. It's just, it was just a fun adventure flick. You know what I mean? Yeah. Good popcorn movie. Right. On. So it's got, it has like those old school vibes of like just the swashbuckling adventure yeah. stuff. Like mm -hmm. it's not, it doesn't take itself overly serious. It has a lot of fun. Uh, Jude, what do you think? What's your general thoughts on this movie? I agree. It also gave me the, um, that movie with Tom Cruise, The Last Samurai, it kind of mm -hmm. gave me that energy at the beginning okay. where he's all fucked up mm -hmm. and he's got to overcome it and become like a hero, which, I mean, he's not really a hero in this. Dalgo is. Um, but yeah, I thought it was a fun movie. Um, we picked it last minute because we couldn't find the other movie that we were going to watch. So then after the fact, I was like, oh shit, it's over two hours and PG-13. This is going <laughs> to suck. But it was, it was fun. Yeah. Um, it wasn't my favorite of the week, but it was a first watch for me and I could watch this again. Right on. Kadish, what's your thoughts on this movie? Um, I found this movie surprisingly enjoyable. Um, so basically the director of this movie is Joe Johnson. And he was an, a special effects artist on the original Indiana Jones movies. And he oh, even directed a couple episodes of the Young Indiana Jones Chronicles. Uh -huh. But uh, you might know him as the director of Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, The Rocketeer, <gasps> Jumanji, Whoa. Uh, Jurassic Park 3, Whoa. and well, Captain sucked. America, the first, Avenger, uh, the first Avenger. That's a, that's a damn good pedigree. Good, good pedigree. pedigree. Good yeah. pedigree yeah. And, yeah. and the guy who wrote this movie, John Fusco, he was the, writers, uh, he was the writer of Young Guns. Yeah, oh, I too. love that movie. We should yeah. do a Young Guns week. I, I would sure. love to do a Western week. I think we have a Western week coming up, right? Yes, uh, Kurt Russell Westerns. Okay, uh, is, yeah. is on the agenda. Oh, but uh, but th this um, 
this is supposedly based on a true story, mm -hmm. but a lot of people have kind of come forward and said like, eh, not so much, yeah. you know, like there was this a lot is, of embellishment here. This is a Hollywood based on a true story. This is not yeah. factual like no. history. <laughs> but, but it was funny because, so this started off as a Disney movie and then after it's run in the theaters, they switched it over to Touchstone, which was kind of like Disney's more adult uh, like movie studio. Mm -hmm. Disney uh, was like, I don't really like all that dick chopping. Talk. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this movie starts off dark. It starts oh, yeah. off with the slaughter. Yeah. 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 Wounded, yeah. Knee. yeah. Wounded yeah. knee was real dark. Yeah. yeah. But at the time they were releasing it around the time, I think of return of the King or some, some of the, one of the Lord of the Rings movies. And they were really trying to cash in on Viggo Morganson's like celebrity at that time. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I, like, like you said, it made $108 million off of a $100 million budget. So technically that's a flop because you need to make at least double your budget in order to break even in Hollywood uh, by Hollywood I don't, accounting standards. Has, has Vito Morgenstern ever been like a... <laughs> Has, has he ever been like able to carry a movie like we like we're thinking he is this week? I mean, I don't. We'll find out at the end of this episode. I mean, yeah, I guess so. I mean, outside of the Lord of the Rings, you know, he they tried to cash in on his popularity as mm -hmm. you know as uh, Lego or Legolas as uh, Aragorn. Aragorn, but I don't really feel like he ever like. Peaked. Peaked. He's, ne he's he never, never been he, a main headliner yeah, guy. Right. Well, the, there, there was a time after Lord of the Rings where he was booking a lot of leading roles. And I think he, you know, basically just cashed out and mm -hmm. he just kind of like does passion projects now. Like his latest one was Green Book, which mm -hmm. he won like mm -hmm. an Oscar for. So... Yeah, he, I mean, he's a fantastic actor. No, he's a good actor. And, and I, I think yeah, I the, love him in everything, but yeah. I don't know that I like the movies but, but that he's in. Speaking about acting, so the opening scene of this movie, uh, he's put against a um, C. Thomas Howell. Mm -hmm. And C. Thomas Howell, you know, I, I like the guy, but he's not a good actor. <laughs> and and when, he, when he starts doing like his whole acting thing against Vigo, it's just like, it's like yeah, night and day. Yeah, that made me think, that was the opening of yeah, this movie. And yeah. that made me think that this movie was going to be completely different than it ended ended up being but that's like a joe johnson thing where like he kind of balances like the spielberg kitschiness with like you know like serious stuff mm -hmm. um but in terms of like the indiana jonesness of this like there's a scene in here where it's v straight v out vigo has like vigo has like a knife and like he's facing off with like a, mm -hmm. a bandit who has like a sword and he just throws the knife at the guy and kills him and it's it's one of those things where he, it, that was basically the scene with in Raiders where oh, yeah. He, yeah. like he pulls out the gun and just shoots the he guy. He brought with a, a big sword. gun to a knife fight. Exactly. Yeah. So Joe Johnson has like a big long history with, with being involved with Indiana Jones and, and stuff like that. And so he really wanted to kind of bring that to this movie. And I think it shows like there are like it, it is a good adventure movie and it's something that's pretty family friendly. Like even mm -hmm. the castration scene was kind of played for it's laughs. It's all good yeah. fun. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I, I, I mean, I mean like they were threatening it, but at the same time it, it wasn't like graphic or anything like I that. I mean, it wasn't even as intimidating as the ice pirates castration. No. scene. Yeah, yeah, no, it was, it was tongue in cheek. Like they, they talk about, Oh, this is what's going to happen to you. And you can see the dude I mean, in the background I mean, with the tools and there's stuff. There's nothing in this movie that's as intense as Mola Ram pulling a guy's heart out of his chest. Oh, right. yeah. yeah. Or nothing like that. Yeah. You know, so yeah, it's just a. Yeah, it's actually a very family friendly movie. Yeah. And mm -hmm. in fact, like towards the end, when it looks like Frank is about to like shoot Hildago or oh, I was, Hidalgo, I was so upset because, yeah. you know, like he just collapsed and it looked like he wasn't going to make. You know, the rest of the race like i was i was tearing up i was i, 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 I was like, I was like please it. don't don't shoot <laughs> no, the horse I was don't. Like, no! <laughs> not after all of this yeah. <laughs> and, and, and like like hidalgo got like a, a stake through his like front like leg uh -huh. and like he was still able to like race Kept to the end trucking. that's yeah. freaking hidalgo dude mm. that's a, an american Frick, mustang freaking mustang yeah, yeah bro but, but apparently ass horses uh, yeah. apparently the actual like historical frank and hidalgo like um According to his own like diaries, Frank left the horse in Arabia. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. So like that whole thing of bringing him back to America and letting him run free. I was like, yeah, that was made up for the movie. Of course it was, because yeah. they have to have a happy ending. But they Damn said it, his Frank descendants Hopkins. are like roaming around in the, the wild packs right now. So I don't know, whatever. But most historians have said that the uh, Ocean of Fire race could never exist because like any horse that you take on that race, no matter what, would die. Mm -hmm. And they're like, people just didn't do that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so like, there's a lot of controversy over the, over the historical accuracy of, of all this movie. Uh, in doing research for this movie, the only thing that I can say for sure is that Frank T. Hopkins existed. <laughs> yes, yeah. that's, that's all. I even went on Audible because there I was, was a horse named Hidalgo. Yes, at one point in time, there was a painted <laughs> Mustang named Hidalgo. Well, a, a lot of the 
stuff about Hidalgo was from oral history that mm -hmm. the uh, screenwriter uh, John Fusco uh, found when he was interviewing like uh, Indian tribes and stuff like that. Because mm -hmm. a lot of this came from like the survivors of the uh, Wounded Knee Massacre mm. and uh, would pass down these tales and that's how he found out about the Hidalgo and all this other stuff. Yeah, and and uh, Hopkins actually did work for uh, is either the Ringling Brothers or one of the traveling circuses at that time. Well, it was, it was Probably, Wild, Wild, Bill's, Bill's. Wild Bill's. Yeah, yeah. well, he that also... a real thing. Yeah, he also worked with the Ringling Brothers or, or somebody. I can't remember. I don't know if that's the right one or not, but I did, I did some research and so this beginning part where they kind of introduce the characters and he's doing the traveling circus thing, that did happen. That was his mm -hmm. character. He was that person. He went out and did all these like adventure Western shows and stuff like that. So there's a little bit of truth to it, but I think they definitely took some liberties with the whole oh, Arabian race for sure. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Um, but, but, but this is a long movie and mm -hmm. in a way like it, it's fun. It, it calls back to like, I, I think Vader said the original uh, mummy with Brendan Fraser, Indiana Jones. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it's like one of those like, um, Turn of the century yeah. adventure tales. If you want to have it. an adventure night, and and it, it, it doesn't on. have any like supernatural elements in it. Nope. But but it's still like very entertaining, and and you 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 learn to love the horse. I There's, like I like the characters in this movie. Yeah, I was gonna say to the supernatural thing. Like you are right. There's no like heavy-handed supernatural elements like there is in Indiana Jones, but I think there's there's a bit of mysticism about that horse. A little bit horse. of Indian mysticism. Yeah, there's a yeah. mysticism with the Indian culture, which I I love Native American culture. I think it's I think it deserves as much tension as it can possibly get. And this movie was so tragic at the beginning, man. Mm -hmm. I felt so bad. And I'm like, Jesus, man, like history's rough. Mm -hmm. And if I can recommend anything, I'm, I'm listening currently to this um, uh, audible book called uh, son of the morning star. And it's all about wounded knee and what actually happened. And it's mm -hmm. taken from journal entries of soldiers that were there and uh, interviews with native Americans that were at, at the, um, you know, at that time were alive and, it's freaking horrific, dude. History yeah. is hardcore. Like some dark shit back then, dude. Uh, yeah. But but it is kind of funny because like the the whole thrust of this movie is this race across the desert, and most of the movie is is based on that and and the struggles that Frank and Hidalgo go through mm -hmm. during the race. But then like the movie stops like right in the middle to have like this kidnapping subplot. Yeah, yeah. we're like he has to go and rescue <laughs> the princess. It totally forgets about the race for like a good forty minutes. <laughs> we put it on pause. Yeah. yeah, bigger things are at stake. Because they're like, I think they said like, hey, once you get to this waypoint, you're gonna have a day of rest or something like that. I think that happened already, though. No, that happened. That the, the kidnapping started when they got there. Yeah, that's what I mean. So like, had to spend, that that was the day rest, of rest. They yeah. had to spend their rest day at rescuing the. Yeah, and it was like. I mean, honestly, if they had only taken his daughter, that would be one thing. But they took the history of the breeding yeah. process, <laughs> and that needs to be addressed <laughs> right now. Yes. Do you want to talk about the <laughs> rampant sexism in this freaking? This well, I, I mean, that was the culture. culture. I know, that's I know, a hundred percent. Yeah, he yeah. was like my lowly daughter. Yeah, and <laughs> when I heard that, I, I asked Kate, so I, I was like. Did he say lowly or did he say lovely? And he was like, nope. Nope. Lowly. He said lowly. <laughs> lowly. And I was like, oh. And we're like, he, <laughs> the the main like bad guy prince or whatever came in and she's like, how dare you come into my father's tent? And the dad was like, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> shut up <laughs> Don't speak to a man in my tent like that. Uh -huh. I was like, God damn, dude. Times were different. Um, yeah, and the sheik had had like, three of his sons die. And so yeah. he's down to like his last daughter. And he's like, oh, if only she had been a boy. It's funny. Cause he's like, he's like, you're my treasured daughter. Also get the fuck out of here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> also, I'm going to marry you off as a fifth harem girl. Yeah. Yeah. And I think what she says, you like, get the honor of being his fifth bitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is funny because I think legally they can't have more than four wives or something like that. So that was, like well, she said in the movie, it's like, weird that you know that it's <laughs> Kate is just like, it's my well, dream. I'm, I'm planning on three more after you, babe. So. <laughs> That's fine. Maybe somebody else will do the dishes. <laughs> Have you seen this guy? It's like his dream to be a chic, right? He's just pillows everywhere, freaking big flowy clothes. Yeah. Yeah. That's but, but the only other female character in this movie was Lady Anne Davenport, who was like the... British uh, aristocrat. Yeah, the, the, the British aristocrat. Turns out to be a great big dirty cheat. Yeah, yeah. She was actually the big bad uh, <laughs> that, that nobody saw coming. Yeah. It was a nice little yeah, twist. Yeah, yeah. Kind of saw it coming. You saw it coming? <laughs> it was pretty obvious. But. Yeah, but but she was paying like all the people to like mess with uh, Frank in mm -hmm. order so that she could win to get the like breeding horses so that she could breed like ultimate racing indoors, yeah. endurance equestrian things. Kind of going back to the Indiana Jones references, um, she that character pays off a group of British soldiers 
to guard a well water. No, that was the prince, wasn't it? Well, the prince was yes. working for the British chick, wasn't she? No, the prince was was racing because for the um, sheik, and the uh, other guy with the beard was <laughs> D- Davenport's um, dude. But okay, but he paid. She paid off the sheik's nephew to um, who wanted to take over the sheik's uh, position in order to um, steal, like raid the camp and, and steal all the uh, the books and stuff like that. Okay, um, but yeah, the well water scene. It, it felt like it was stripped, uh, ripped right out of Indiana Jones. Oh yeah, it was a, it, even the British officer. I kind of got like remember the Nazi dude from oh, Raiders yeah, from, from the plane. Looks just like him. Yeah, yeah. I was he watching. goes running after his camel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh man, that's freaking. There's a lot of references to Indiana Jones in this movie, sure. and I loved it. I had a great probably time. Probably I liked it. Yeah, probably. That's a. Is this a five star movie? For no. <laughs> no, no. Do you guys want to do final thoughts, or do you have anything kind else? Kind of, because I really want to get to the reason why we're all wearing tattoos. Today. No. Okay. All right. Cool. <laughs> so, final thoughts on Hidalgo. So, this is the favorite of the week for you. Probably my favorite movie what of the you, week. What do you get? I, I just, star? I just had a good time with this movie. Um, it was fun. <clears throat> star rating. Um, star rating. Uh, three and a half. Okay, yeah. that's pretty high. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. yeah, I think yeah so. That's a lot. Yeah. yeah. Is this something that you're gonna watch with like the grandkids or something? I don't know. It just it was a good movie. Was, I had a good time. Okay. I, I I have really not a lot of bad things to say about it because there wasn't a lot of bad things to say about it. I guess oh, really had a great cast. Yeah. Um, good cast. Do you think good characters? Vigo, it was fun watching it. The horse was cool. Vigo the villains off. were vil- vile. You know, it was, it was fine. <laughs> Vigo pulled the off a southern were vile. <laughs> the, Yes, what every good movie needs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A vile and, villain. I need a coffee swords. cup that says the villains were vile. <laughs> yeah. uh, Jude, final thoughts and give it a rating. I enjoyed it. It was surprisingly good. Um, first watch for me. Um, I don't need to watch it again, but I'm like, yeah, I would watch it again. If somebody was like, oh, I've never seen that. And we're in the presence of children. I'd be like, pop a doll, go on. Yeah. yeah. It's a good I story. I loved the horse. He's so pretty. He's a hero. <laughs> um, you mean that mixed blood stallion or, or mixed blood Mustang? Listen, I, I too <laughs> am a mixed blood stallion. <laughs> I think we all are. <laughs> you know, Vigo Morganson bought that horse after filming was <gasps> no done. No way. Uh, yeah, Dude, yeah. I'm so glad you have these little moments of trivia. That was so nice. <laughs> yeah, he he, uh, he had a real connection with that horse, and he decided to, to buy it and took, takes care of it to this I day. I love that. That's awesome. That's an I'm, extra half star for taking care of horses. Uh, I'm, I'm glad Vigo Morthouse bought that. About that. <laughs> Horse, that's really nice. Well, it's, it's Vigo. It's Vigo. <laughs> <laughs> Vincent Middleson. <laughs> uh, it is. I, I was going to give it uh, three stars, but now that I know that he adopted a horse, <laughs> and it's the prettiest horse, it's three and a half stars. Wow. Half star for horse adoption. <laughs> I'm calling it now. It's a new rating yeah, system. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Kadish, final thoughts. Give it a rating. Yeah, uh, th- this was a fun movie. Uh, very Disney-ish, very family-friendly, which is which is nice. You know, it's nice to see like a good movie that you could watch <laughs> with the family. Um, and Vigo was great in it, and the, the horse was great, and uh, I really enjoyed it. So I'm going to give it uh, three almost castrations out of five. Nice. Uh, yeah, I'm with you guys. This is a solid three movie. Um, I had a ton of fun watching it. I haven't seen it in a long time and I, I didn't realize it was as good as it was. I wish it would have done better because I think it deserves more praise. I would definitely suggest people go check it out if they haven't seen it already. Um, I love the horse. Vigo is a fantastic actor. I think he pulls off a Southern accent fairly well. He pulls off the cowboy vibe. Yeah, he did. So that's, I mean, that's not the easiest thing to do, especially, uh, I don't know what I was going to say, but anyway, uh, a ton of fun, three-star movie. Go check it out. All right, that's it for Hildalgo. Next on our list is History of Violence. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. Hey, if you want to support the podcast and get some awesome merch in return, go to SaltyNerdStore.com and uh, grab some of our T-shirts, mugs, and stickers, and other stuff like that. Uh, we have a lot of really good stuff out there. This is my mug. Uh, I don't I have to make this one available. <laughs> Uh, Cody that's, the old, that's the older version. <laughs> yeah, that's an older one. But anyway, uh, people, super awesome people like Cody Conradi have uh, Salty Nerd Podcast super mugs. Super awesome. Super awesome, guys. Super, uh, you know, he's a super cool he, guy. He uh, texted me and said, uh, hey, can I have a mug? Is that all right with you? And I was like, fuck yeah, bro. Yeah, uh, <laughs> has he butt dialed you lately? Would you like to, would you like to, like, like, 
like me to hand deliver it? <laughs> I'm trying to get Kadish to go to Norway on our honeymoon. I, I know where the shipping information is now. <laughs> I know where Kota Kanari lives. It's all pretty <laughs> fucking cool. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I hear he knows the royal family. Yeah, I hear that too. That's pretty Ooh, exciting. Yeah. He neglected to mention that. <laughs> I'll ask if, he, if the Queen of England wants a freaking mug. He's a big deal. <laughs> Would she like to sip her tea out of a salty nerd <laughs> podcast? Oh, that would be Can you imagine? So funny. Oh, holy oh, shit. We'd be so big overseas. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting more and more. Anyway. I think all if right. that happened, we would all fall Listen, down man, dead immediately. We are fucking huge in Estonia. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> We're in the top charts in the freaking European, you know, podcasting world. Yeah, man. the Kazakhstans love us. <laughs> Cheers to our, our friends Cheers, overseas. I'd buy my own podcast. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, Shit, anyway. this one looks good too. SaltyNerdStore.com. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. I know. Oh my goodness. We'll get to that. That's the last movie we're talking about. Today, right now, we're talking about history of violence. Finish your drink. <laughs> Jude, finish your drink. And you then were still talking. <laughs> history of violence. Fuck. I, I don't know. Even... 2005. It's going to be a fun movie to talk about. Are you done drinking, Jude? Does it matter? No. Go ahead, take it away. What is this movie I can about? drink and talk at the same time. Oh, God. 2000... No, I'm sorry. I'm kidding. 2005, History of Violence. Rated R with a runtime of one hour, 36 minutes. Had a budget of $32 million. What do you think this brought in? That's it? $32 million? Uh, I don't know. Probably 54 I don't remember this being very popular. B? Um, again, I don't think this did well. So I, maybe it broke even. $32 million. $61 million. Wow. Nice. Yeah, so it almost d doubled its budget. Nice. Okay. What's it all about? All right. Tom Stahl runs a diner and loves his family. Joey Cusack is the super murdery brother of Philly crime boss William Hurt. <laughs> Stahl is Cusack. Cusack is Stahl. When the man in black comes to Tom's small town for a reckoning, the man Joey was in Philly collides with the man Tom is today. In order to protect his family from the crime lord brother who now knows he's alive, he drives back to Philly for a beer and to make peace. When his plan backfires, he dusts off his old killing skills and then heads back to Millbrook for some meatloaf with his wife and kids who are now terrified of him. Discuss. No, they're not terrified of him. They're, they're into it. You think so? Oh, yeah. Will I bang on the staircase? Uh, dude, okay, first off, <laughs> listen. I said there's, wife there's, and kids. There's, there's two things I need to get off my chest. Yeah, go for it. Okay, Viggo Mortensen does a lot of sex scenes in his movies this week. All right. Every single one of them are weird. <laughs> They're the most awkward fucking sex scenes I've ever um, seen in any movie in my life. The worst sex mm. scene was the one of him and his cheerleader wife. Yeah. Weird. That was so fucking weird. weird. <laughs> Immediately. It happens like five minutes into the oh, movie yeah. and I was like this is... <laughs> I'm like, like embarrassed for this movie because it's it so was, fucking weird. They did not have a good sex coach or whatever they, they're called. Intimacy coach. Intimacy, Intimacy coach. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. coach, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's very strange, awkward sex scenes in this movie. She's like, we didn't get to be teenagers together. Ugh. Just stay right there. And she comes cool. out in a, te in a cheerleader outfit yeah. and immediately she like lifts her her skirt up she's like hey look at this pussy <laughs> and, and, then, and it's so weird we're along for the fucking ride and there's I no cut i did like, not want that the camera stays no. in, like on the edge of the bed just watching them and yeah, i'm just yeah. i'm watching i'm like what are they are they doing this for real and yes. it's like it, so it's still, and vigo's character is like i don't remember this in high school <laughs> and, and like the whole time they're doing cringy things like saying Ew, you're naughty. Oh yeah. my yeah, God. I yeah, I am naughty. The dialogue You're is... my daddy. <laughs> my parents are in the next room and I'm like, I don't want to be a part of this. <laughs> so it's the, fucking weird. There's, there's there's that scene and there's a scene in the next movie we'll talk about, which is even more awkward. It's so we'll get there. weird. But we'll, we'll get, get there. there. We'll get but there. there's there's another thing in this movie. At the very beginning of this movie, all right, before before we even see Vigo, right? Mm. There's a scene in the movie where where the bad dudes that start this movie off that he kills in the diner, where they're, they're at a hotel, mm -hmm. okay? They don't want to pay for the room, and people have seen what they look like. So one guy goes in, and he kills everybody in, in the in the, in the the lobby. Mm -hmm. As you do. As, as you do, right? Because they're on if the land on criminals. Cash. They go full dust so till dawn. Then yeah. he comes back, and he goes, he goes, you did it? Yep. He's like, hold on, I got to get a drink. So the other fucking guy goes back into the to the hotel, hotel uh, lobby yeah. room, right? Office, whatever. Office, whatever. And he knows people are dead. The other guy killed everybody. So what does the guy do? The guy touches 
every fucking thing that he can put his fingers on in the in the building in the house mm -hmm. the book the countertop the 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 the, the glass the his fingerprints are all over the place mm -hmm. Terrible criminals. It took me out of it. Really? Immediately. Whoa. Yeah, it was weird, man. If you go back and you watch that scene, you're going to laugh. Hmm. Because the guy goes in there, knowing people are dead, knowing it's a crime scene, knowing this shit went down, yeah. to get a glass of water, and he literally touches everything in the The thing room. is, is that it's they're weird. not very good criminals. It's, no. it's, kind of <laughs> I don't, it's just awful. It's so dumb. It's just like... Well, unless no, his finger say about murdering the just, little girl. Was, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Listen, on top of what that. you don't know because you're not in the mob is that you don't have fingerprints. They burn them yeah. off. Yeah, it was when just you uh, come of age. And it's like if you, um, you know, some people have a bar mitzvah. The mob mm -hmm. has the burning of the fingerprints. Yeah. I'm making this all up. I know. Yeah. Um, I didn't really realize that, but go, they did. When you go, go back and watch it, you'll laugh. They shot a child. Yes, yeah. they did. As the movie started out, yeah. real dark. We, 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 we they, like, they, they set up that like, these people are he's shitty. He's like, shh, it's okay. It's totally okay. I'm just going to put this gun against your. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's just that kind of stuff just completely took me okay. out of the movie. It was, right. it was weird, man. It was. Uh, weird. I've never seen this movie before. This is my first watch. Yeah, me too. Same. I was totally expecting like a, like a, early version of john wick or something like that like history of violence this man who lives in a small town who has a history of being this badass you know murder assassin mm -hmm. i'm like oh that sounds cool that's not really what we got like no. not at all it was kind of weird and can i tell you something you can tell me anything you want. i hated the fuck out of this movie did yeah. you really? i hated I did, it the yeah. whole way Whoa. i hated it the whole fucking way oh my god i almost hit you really hard <laughs> <laughs> i'm with you um from the awkward sex scene to the very end, I was like, this is horrible. This whole movie is fucking horrible. I hate it. it I hated horribly. his son. Yeah. Oh, his son was a... Oh. Yeah. I, I hated his wife. I hated... <laughs> I, oh, my God. I hated his brother. His William Hurt is the most nonsensical, non-believable fucking mob, mob boss. boss brother what was he <laughs> trying to accomplish everything he did was like super exaggerated and like insane okay. so he got a william hurt he got a um best supporting actor nomination <laughs> for that role no terrible shit. all right so we gotta explain this yeah, a little he, bit he, he was in it for less than 10 minutes i'm it's so awful. angry right now <laughs> so vigo morton's character who goes by the name uh tom John, stall, tom stall. Tom stall. Gets when he's not Joey Cusack. Gets confronted by an old nemesis of his, and uh, they call him out as being Joey <clears throat> Cusack. Well, let's set it up really quick first. So the guys I talked about in the beginning, they go, they, they need, they're gonna, they need money, so they go to Tom's diner, diner to rob it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he ends up killing both of them, and he makes the news. Headline news, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, his face and, is all over the so, place. And so then his the stupid fucking small town yeah, so, where nothing right. happens. They're like, this is a big deal. And he's like, how about if we don't? So this so this sets up how people find back out in about Philly him. see him on the news and stuff. And yeah. He should have gone that, further. That, that sets everything up. Yeah. So. And uh, he gets confronted. He gets called out for being the person who he actually is. And then mm -hmm. as a series of events go, these guys don't leave them alone. They threaten his family. He ends up murdering them all, mm -hmm. which is my favorite scene in the movie, although it's not great. It was uh, it was very tense. When he murders them all in front of his house or yes. at his mm -hmm. brother's house? In his front of his house. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I like that one I too. like that scene. And yeah. I finally like his... And Ed Harris plays the guy from Philly. Right. Yeah, who's Man in Black. Awesome. Yeah. Argu arguably the best role in the movie. Yeah, for sure. I think. Yeah, I mm -hmm. agree with you on that one. Um, so the kid, like early on, the kid's getting bullied. He's kind of like a weakling and his father's always like very passive. Oh, don't fight him. We don't solve problems with violence. And then mm -hmm. it hits the kid, which is freaking stupid. But yeah, I hated everything. <laughs> All of the whole the like, relationship with his family, line, yeah. with like the kid getting bullied in school. It didn't make any sense. It didn't go anywhere and it was stupid and I hated it. Yeah. Yeah. They, I mean, totally they were agree. just with, with his kid, they were just setting up that, that, uh, is it Tom? Stall? Tom Stall. Yeah. Tom, Joey. He, he, Joey Tom. Joey, Joey Tom. Tom. He has JT. a he has a trigger buried in him uh -huh. that he has turned off. That trigger gets turned on. He's a completely different psychopath, murdering killer. Mm -hmm. And how what I how I picked up with that with his son is that his son has that same thing. Mm -hmm. It's just buried deeper, and he finally got pushed to his limit. Oh, okay. And then he went. A I little, don't hate And that. he went a little crazy, and that's okay. and that's 
where they were making the connection with him and his son. What I, I didn't think like, if so, you had directed this movie, I might have liked it more. Yeah. What I didn't like is that the son like resented the father. Like, what are you going to do? Shoot everybody? Yeah, they, well, like, they he was being a weird putz pl- about yeah. it. We don't place. fight people in this family. No. We, we just shoot, shoot them. I'm like, shut killed. up, dude. Get he the saved your life. Out of yeah, here. Ex- yeah, thank yeah. you. The son was so unlikable mm-hmm. that any of that little character development that you just brought up well, that's completely what I, that's, washed that's away. That's what I took out of it. Yeah. But I totally, no, I totally get it. I agree with you. But it was washed away by this character's mm-hmm. like obnoxious, annoying attitude. Um, I guess you could call that bad directing or writing maybe yeah. i don't know so okay should we all three not really like this movie can you tell us why in like a professional hollywood Wait, writing who thing? picked it i think i, it was, I think mean, i did i didn't I pick it because of i knew vigo was in it and i'd never seen it before okay so it's my fault a very Fuck scientific you. method Fuck you. <laughs> uh go ahead Kadish, what did you think about this movie and why do we all hate it so much so i went to see this movie when it came out in theaters because it is directed by david cronenberg and David Cronenberg is a very famous uh, director in the sense that, like, he kind of came out from uh, like schlocky horror and became like a, a big kind of like art house guy where he was making like these serious films like like this one, History of Violence, and it's actually based off of a graphic novel. Um, and up to the point where Ed Harris gets killed, it's very faithful to the graphic novel, and then it goes off in a completely different direction. And the the kind of moral of the story here um, from Cronenberg who hates violence uh, he basically says that like violence is the key to the the destruction of of family and the ending of the movie when um, when Vigo comes back home and he sits down with his family and um, his wife like has like a tear down her cheek and stuff like that the idea is that the family has been shattered in such a way where it like they're going to be together but it's never going to be like it was and so like he had like a very specific message that he wanted to send with this movie and it doesn't resonate with everyone but i actually think that this is a very interesting film it's it's the the violence is very realistic and graphic and um that moment where ed harris finally gets vigo to admit that he's this guy that he's been accusing him of being since the beginning was just like really cool it was was a very chilling turn where he's like i should have killed you in philly Mm. you know um and originally harrison ford was going to be in in the lead role in this as vigo instead of vigo instead of vigo instead of vigo Hmm. yeah and then uh that would have been interesting and then uh when harrison ford passed they were going to get thomas jane to do it okay and then thomas jane passed and so vigo kind of stepped in i feel like and this is probably sacrilegious to a lot of people but i feel like thomas jane and vigo mortensen are interchangeable in a lot of things Who's thomas? i gotta look his name up well vigo is a much better actor than thomas jane i agree uh, but they thomas, look so similar yeah well thomas jane uh, he, he's in the, the first mist. season of, of the expanse uh, he was in the mist and he he was hung. also yeah yeah he, he was the lead actor in hbo's hung uh, where he played a male prostitute he doesn't look anything like vigo I, I don't think so either. I don't know what Jude's smoking. <laughs> I'm, I'm talking about dicks. Oh, okay. I got you. Yeah, yeah, totally. They, they got the bulbous head. Yeah, I totally. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, it's a peacemaker reference. Oh, shit. Okay. okay uh, but, but anyway. You went too far, Katie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, that's where the line is drawn? <laughs> the bulbous headline? Okay. Right. <laughs> I'm so into myself right now. <laughs> we'll get there, Jude. Calm down. Anyway, like, like <laughs> for for being based off of a graphic novel and being a David Cronenberg movie and starring Viggo Morgensen and having like very in your face like hardcore depictions of violence, I, I thought this movie was pretty decent. The two sex scenes are very awkward. You got the cheerleader scene, then you got the uh, sex scene on the stairway. Uh, and I understood the sex scene on the on the stairway. That was what? like high intense emotion. No, but the what? cheerleader one was just like awkward and and like that's fine if that's what you want to do. But I don't want to watch it. Well, Cron- <laughs> Cronenberg actually asked his stunt coordinator if they needed to put padding down on the stairs for Maria Bello. Yes, you do. And and, yeah. and and the stunt guy was like, I've never heard of padding for a sex scene before. Um, but there's a scene where like after that happens where she has like bruises on her back and, and like you see it and they actually had to put makeup on her to cover up all the bruising. Oh my God. Uh, because like she just got yeah. like Yeah, those are wood oh, stairs. That's terrible. So we got to talk about it because we brought it up. She was into it. She sex on it. stairs? Sex it's on the good. stairs. Not a good idea. No. no, never do sex on stairs. That's mm-hmm. a bad thing. They mm-hmm. did it in Family Man and it wasn't great. You remember that? And then they did it in this movie and I was like, that's, that looks so uncomfortable. Like it is. Yeah. I could completely 
not understand why they, and, and then for like the, oh, I understand it because it's intense. I don't get that. When you're like really pissed off at somebody and you're like, you lied to me my whole life. We've got kids together and now you're some freaking mobster assassin. That's not the moment to be like, oh my God, you're so hot. Well, she's, like, she's into it. That's why I say she's into it. She's, you think she's into her yeah, husband being I a, do. I think she, I think it turned her on, I'm the gonna, whole thing. I'm going to step in as the ambassador of estrogen. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so I understand the dynamic between a couple who, like, they're in it. And, and as far as she's concerned, like, we're stuck together. And I'm so pissed off at you. And I'm, I'm scared. And I'm having a lot of emotions. And I felt like the... A, like the first sex scene was very forced and like, Ooh, I'm going to, I'm going to make this sexy. And that, that was very forced. And like, it felt like they were a couple who's very kind of like, for lack of a better word, boring. And so when all of this shit happens and all of these emotions hit these humans, they love each other and she's so furious that she feels like she hates him. But at the same time, she loves him and he's pulling at her and it's violent. And then all of a sudden I understand the emotion of just having so much within your body emotionally that you don't know what to do about it. So you have to get it out and then you fuck. Yeah, and the, I'm, I'm not being sarcastic or silly or like making a joke out of it or anything, but like I, I, got that like sometimes your emotions are so fucking heightened that you have to get them out of your body and the only thing that makes sense is sex on the staircase putting, no putting it aside with the person that is your person and just fucking getting well, that's called, getting it out it's called angry sex and it's great well most of the time. also the minute that they're done <laughs> she gets up and vigo yeah, kind of reaches out for her and she's like it. no yeah she's, <laughs> don't, don't touch me <laughs> don't touch me the emotions have come their fruition and as soon yeah, as it was did. over as soon as it was over like she she had that out of her system the the roller coaster ride that yeah. was up on the hill of these emotions and now that it's over she's deflated and she's sickened i got that hmm. that's fascinating I thought the cheerleader thing was way more believable than this freaking oh my staircase. No, they were God. Both, both scenes are cringy. I mean, they're both, I guess, believable, but I don't fucking want to watch you role play with your yeah, mate. It was weird. <laughs> what, what did you guys think of the, the final scene where Vigo goes to William Hurt's house, who plays his brother? I hated and all of that. basically kills everyone. I thought, uh, I thought it was too much. I liked, I liked the killing. I hated <clears throat> William Hurt. William Hurt was so unbelievable. I cannot fucking believe he won an award for this. I he was almost comical. He was nom yeah. he was nominated. He was he almost comical as like a mob boss because mm -hmm. he's like he was mad at his yeah he was, henchman. He, was, he was a cartoon character. Yeah, he was mad at his henchman because he couldn't. He's like you had one. Literally, I think he said you have one job and you fit like you're such a freaking doofus. He, he was like, how do you fuck that up? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it was like a goofy mm -hmm. moment, and then. They're so dumb that Vigo is able to like trick them into leaving and then he kills everybody. Well, well, well like, William Hurt, you know, he sees that, you know, his brother has resurfaced. Yeah. And so he calls him up and Vigo has to go to his house in Philly. And he's got like this big mansion and he invites him in and it comes down the stairs and it looks like everything's hunky dory. And, you know, he's hugging him, you know, mm -hmm. saying like, welcome back, brother. Yeah, I thought like, you were dead. Like mobsters do. Yeah. And takes him into his, his, immaculately uh, decorated study <laughs> and they have like a little exchange and then like his henchmen try to kill him and then vigo just goes off and murders everybody yeah. yep. including his brother yeah. yeah and then goes home and has dinner yeah i really did like the the little scene with his daughter who brings him a plate at the dinner table yeah i thought that was sweet yeah i was like because she doesn't know what's going on no she she's understand. a little girl yeah. she was sweet <clears throat> and it was like it was that family moment where like you know no matter how jacked up things can be we start all we still are a family and, and I, like the horror on his wife's face that's like you are not the man i married i don't know what to do with this we yeah. have two children and a life and now i am trapped well it, End scene. it, it was funny because the minute that william hurt came down the stairs um jude was like oh wouldn't it be funny if this was an episode of mythic quest <laughs> <laughs> i saw i thought the same thing i'm like where's cw at yeah. uh -huh. <laughs> anyway all right let's do final thoughts on history of violence what do you think v uh, I, I didn't like this movie no I, I thought it was really silly how many stars did you get it uh two stars i guess yeah okay two. all right no final thoughts. No, no not really. It just, it was just, it just wasn't set up good from the get go. And 
it was just awkward and just the scenes didn't really run together for me and i didn't really buy into the characters and okay you, you know um you guys i from the ending i took away is that the family was like oh cool we're a mobster family now so, <laughs> you know so yeah i just okay i'm not into it i didn't like it all right jude final thoughts Come to me on the day of my daughter's wedding. Yeah. <laughs> um, I hated this movie almost from the get-go. And then it ended and I was like, that was a complete waste of time and I hated it. Mm. Um, if anybody ever tries to make me watch it again, I will <laughs> probably get violent. Um, it's I guess it's not bad enough to be a one-star crap fest, but it's not much above. So for me, it is one and a half cheerleader sex scenes um out of five okay katie okay, show about you so there's lots of things that i like about this movie uh especially ed harris's performance like he steals every scene that he's freaking in he's got like that dead eye uh makeup mm -hmm. going on and the first scene where he kind of confronts vigo in at the character's diner uh while he's sitting at the counter he's not wearing pants Right? Like when they were filming it, like Ed Harris just was in his tidy whities uh, at, at the at the counter, and he was doing everything he could to make Vigo crack up, <laughs> and and Vigo like ruined so many takes because he just couldn't look at Ed Harris without laughing, and uh, the two of them actually became pretty good friends on this movie, and it was just kind of interesting to see like their dynamic uh, in, in this film kind of like evolve. And uh, David Cronenberg, you know, he's a very talented director in my book. Uh, he's made some really messed up movies. Uh, this movie, uh, I remember when I saw it in the theater, I was kind of disappointed with, with how it turned out. Upon, upon rewatching it, that disappointment hasn't gone away. Um, so to me, it's a solid two stars out of five. Okay. Uh, there's things I liked about this movie. <clears throat> I'm not really sure if Viggo Mortensen was the right cast for this because he always seemed... It always seemed reluctant. Whether it, when he was like the pleasant dad from the small town, it worked. But as soon as he went and turned into Joey, like I didn't see a transformation. Like he never went to that like dark part of his psyche and like turned into the freaking psycho killer. Mm -hmm. I never saw that. I just saw like a reluctant dad who was like kind of good at killing people. I disagree because really? I feel like that that first step, the, the, that first scene where he leaps over the counter and he's shooting, he shoots like the bad guys. Mm -hmm. Immediately, like I've never watched this before. I didn't know what the story was. I had no background background information, and immediately I was like, "He's somebody else." <laughs> um, so, like the whole time before, like up until he was like, "I should have killed you in Philly." I was like, "He's Joey, right? He's Joey. Is he Joey? He's Joey. He's yeah. totally Joey." So, like, I I don't find fault with anything that he did in this movie. I hate the movie. I don't hate him. Mm, okay. I just, I felt like he could have gone darker. I felt like he could have been more, a little bit more of a menace. Bring a little bit more John Wick out of him, you know? Okay. Like you came to my family and you freaking came over here and ruined Tell my life. Freaking murder you all. Like I wanted some I, anger I, I wanted him. some, some like, uh, you know the, the actor who played Two-Face in the, in the Batman movie? Aaron Eckhart. Aaron mm. Eckhart. I wanted, I, I wanted to see a flip. Mm. Yeah. That's what, yeah. A, a more flip, noticeable a change. Is, yeah, you know, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, because right? he went from Harvey Dent, the lawyer, the yeah. you know guy, and then he goes like, "Were you freaking?" You know, he starts like, screaming I wanted, at people. I wanted to see that. He didn't fall into a vat of right, chemical but, waste. But I, I feel like he could have like there could have been like a switch flip. Yeah, yeah. And, and Joey come out. Yeah, you I can see I mean? that. I yeah. can see that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's. I think that's what I'm trying to get at. Yeah. Uh, but other than that, I I didn't hate this movie. I had fun with it. I do agree. That both sex scenes super cringy. <laughs> Weird. I don't know why mm -hmm. the, the freaking staircase thing was even really necessary. Um, it's, uh, it's probably it's just, two. It's just where that violence happened to happen. It's yeah. It's uh, two stars. Uh, not great, but I didn't hate it. Um, <laughs> was it William Hurt? Yeah, William Hurt was kind of comical in this. Apparently, movie. he he's a monster. Oh, I guess. The, the, yeah, the minute he started speaking, the minute he started speaking, Jude cracked up. She was like, "Are you serious?" Right now? <laughs> <laughs> I hated him so much. Yeah. She, she's like, "Who wrote this dialogue?" Yeah. <laughs> and like. Who told him to like do that that stuff with his face? Like the whole time he was just like, bug eyes, squint eyes, <laughs> bug eyes, squint eyes. He won an Furrow. award. He won an award. No, no, he was nominated, nominated for, for an, an Academy award. award for Best Supporting Was it a actor. Razzie? <laughs> Is that the All right, award? Two-star movie uh, for History of Violence. I don't know if you want to check it out. I guess you can, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't say go. Don't waste I'd, your time. I'd say 
Just pass. Pass. Yeah. All right. Last movie on our list today is Eastern Promises. Stay tuned. We'll be right back and we're going to talk about that movie. Let me see what it tastes it's like. still gin. Is it good? Why is he doing a Russian accent still? Uh, oh, yeah, my. Hey, Thos Vadanya. All right. <clears throat> Next movie on our list Eastern Promises, my favorite movie of the week. Obviously, we're all excited to talk about it because we're all freaking tatted up and goofy and having a lot of fun with this. So uh, let's dive right into it. Eastern Promises, take it away, Jude. Okay. Look at that sneak down who freaking strike of the bike. I fucking love this right now. <laughs> I'm gonna tell my I'm wife. So, Dude. I'm so into myself right now. We're gonna get a text message just... from Katie. She's gonna be like, God damn it, Jude got a neck tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> I can just say this is an S for my wife. There you go. Yeah. 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 Story. Yeah. 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 This is this is the snake. <laughs> For Slytherin, right? <laughs> I, was, I was trying to make it about you, and I was like, oh, nobody wants to hear that. <laughs> this is a snake for my fiancé, the pendulum. <laughs> All over her neck. That's right. Oh, God. <laughs> God damn it. 2007, so Eastern you need Promises. Pearl necklace, very good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just second that bust on face. No big deal. <laughs> It you stupid me. whore. <laughs> <laughs> you like it. <laughs> it's come from Croatia. <laughs> Am I done with my examination? <laughs> Get the fuck out of here come. so I can cut my clothes come, on. Come, I'm going to watch you fuck this bitch. <laughs> Make you man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <Okay. laughs> What's this movie all about, dude? <laughs> I didn't even get to the budget yet. <laughs> 2007 Eastern Promises rated R with a runtime of one hour, 40 minutes, four zero. Had a budget of $55 million. What do you think this brought in? I don't know. It's pretty popular. I remember it being a big deal. Uh, I'm going to say hundred million. <laughs> I don't know. I don't remember this movie. Um, I'm going to say it broke even. Okay. Just 50 million. That's it. Yeah. All right. $56 million. Really? Yeah. Vader what? wins a speedboat. <laughs> <laughs> that's it? Man, I thought this movie is like... From I don't know, I I was assumed it was a well, popular movie. It's like, it's like I said earlier, I, Vigo. I don't think he carries movies that well. He freaking, this movie's dope. Well, yeah, it's it's okay. I agree. Uh, this was my favorite of the week. Yeah, I thought he was a uh, fucking amazing in it. But is it a blockbuster? No, no. no it's almost no. like an indie movie. Yeah, it's yeah. one of those movies that you're like, have you seen Eastern Promises? Because Vigo Mortensen is awesome in it. Yeah. Is it a movie that like everyone has seen? Fucking no. No, apparently not. Fifty million. That's crazy. Fucking no. no. <laughs> I know. We're all tatted up in mm. honor of this movie. Yeah, like I loved it so much I went and got a neck neck tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> We're probably getting laughed at by the Russian mob right Me now. Too. Seriously. Please don't come for us. <laughs> yeah, no. We're just nerds <laughs> talking about movies. Yeah. Uh Jude, go. Ever glasses. What's this movie all about? <laughs> Naomi Watts just wants to find a family member of the newborn baby whose Russian mother died during delivery at the hospital where she works. When she asks her Russian uncle to translate the girl's diary that she found, he reads a little and then refuses to finish. A clue in the diary leads her to a restaurant where a sweet old Russian man takes a liking to her and agrees to translate the diary. Turns out, he's the head of the Russian mob. And the diary is all about how he and his son kidnapped, drugged, and raped that girl. The old man tells his driver, Vigo, to take care of the problem. Old man is impressed with Vigo's work ethic, and Vigo gets a promotion. When Vigo is set upon by spa assassins, he takes them all out in a knockdown dicks out brawl <laughs> that he learns was a betrayal by old man Russia. Vigo was purposely mistaken for old man's son and was supposed to die. Now it's personal. He's going to take over the Russian mob and replace old man. But first, he's got to fix Naomi Watts motorcycle and save that poor orphaned baby. This movie is so dark. Yeah, it is very dark. It's very dark. Like yeah. just the opening scene with this poor young girl who's pregnant, walks into a pharmacy and she's asking for help and she freaking just freaking gushes She's blood. She's bleeding everywhere. Yeah, it is. And then you're like, and oh, like, God. The, he, she walks into a pharmacy, and the pharmacist is like, you want uh, methadone? You have to have a prescription. Yeah. <laughs> and she's like, uh, I'm just going to bleed to death on your floor. And yeah. he's like, cool. Yeah, it was real dark. And then the whole, the, the entire plot 
is just Naomi Watts trying to save this poor freaking baby. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And everybody wants the baby to be dead. I just need this thing translated and she goes to the wrong place. Yeah. To get it translated. It's just one bad move I'm going after to go another. to the Russian restaurant. See if anybody there knows how to translate Russian. Yeah. Basically, it's just, right? I, I was, I mean, I've seen this movie and I love this movie, but it's been a minute since I watched it. I forgot how freaking dark this was. Mm -hmm. Like it goes down a real dark rabbit hole for a while. Um, yeah. But the, the Vigo as the driver assassin freaking enforcer <laughs> dude. I, I am driver. Yeah, I'm driver. I drive, slip. I go straight, I go right, that, I go left. That's it. That's what I do. I don't do anything. <laughs> he's, he freaking, he's a badass in this movie, uh -huh. dude. There was that scene where... Um, clearly, you are clearly more than a driver, sir. <laughs> <laughs> so Vigo is kind of like the body, the bodyguard to the main Russian mobster's son, mm -hmm. uh, Krill. What's his name? It starts with a K, I, I, I think. Um, but he's Kirill? this kid's like a freaking a complete loser, right? He's drunk all the time. He's he's a he's boy. also a closet homosexual. You think Par so? Party boy, party boy Kirill. Yeah, like Kirill, so Krill, whatever his name is. Um, he doesn't matter. And Vigo's constant. Well, the whole reason that they killed that guy at the beginning was because he was spreading word rumors that that Kirill was was gay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which and he he's is. He's like obsessed and, with watching Vigo fuck girls. Well, well, he's in love with Vigo, mm -hmm. and th that's why. So, is yeah. that? Yeah, I didn't get that. Out I of didn't. This movie. Yeah. But okay. Oh okay. yeah, one hundred percent. So he's the son of the Russian mob, mob boss head, yeah. and there are rumors that he's gay. And they can't have that in the Russian mob. So they have to kill the guy who was starting the rumors. But in the meantime, like he's totally like enamored with Viggo Mortensen. And he like has him along for all of his adventures. And then at one point he's like, well, I'm supposed to be into this. So I'm going to say that my dad told me I have to watch you fuck a girl. So in that scene where he's watching Viggo have sex with a girl, mm -hmm. uh, he said that I need to do this to make sure you're not gay. Right. Yeah. He's yeah. totally like, like taking it off of me and putting it on you. But, like but, I got to make sure you're not. But th there's also a scene wrong. where Vigo has to tell, uh, Simeon, uh, the, the head of the Russian mafia, uh, about the rumors that his son's gay mm -hmm. and it doesn't shock Simeon at all. In fact, he, he, he basically confirms that like he knows his son's gay and, mm -hmm. and it's uh, shameful for him and all this other stuff. Yeah. And it's even in the diary too, when they translate it. Yeah. And, uh, so like the son actually had nothing to do with the r young Russian girl who I think was 14 when she got yeah. pregnant. Mm -hmm. Uh, it was all the father. The father was the one who raped her and stuff like that. And, and that's one of the reasons why he's so desperate to get the girl's diary and also get the baby and all this stuff to and kill to, anybody who might've read about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. to, to, to erase any link to him. Yeah. And that's kind of the crust of this whole movie is just like the complete eradication of anybody who might know anything. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And, and Vigo later on, we get a surprise little twist that Vigo is actually working for Scotland Yard. Undercover as a Russian yeah. agent. Deep well, so, so eh, they're in league. He's not working for them. You don't yeah, think he's working he, for no, them? No, he, he's an FSB agent. Who, yeah, he's KGB, who, well, which yeah. formerly KGB. Right. But he has a like a partnership with Scotland Yard, where like he's infiltrating the Russian mafia and working with Scotland Yard to bring them down because the the whole story takes place in in London. Right. So they're they're in Great Britain uh, mm -hmm. while this story is taking place. But he's a KGB agent, basically. And at the end of the movie, he basically usurps uh, Simeon's position and he becomes like the head of the Russian mob in, yeah. in Great Britain. And uh, it's it's completely bonkers. I love it. I thought it was great. I dug it. Yeah. Yeah. Like the, he's such a freaking badass. I'm going to start doing that. That well, finger neck. So thing Naomi Watts' uh, uncle, I guess, is yeah, also so she's Russian. She's half Russian. Her mm. mother was English. Her father was Russian. I think her father's dead or like he left or something. He's dead. Um, so the Russian uncle was her father's brother, mm. which is he's still like some kind of fucking, I don't know, deadbeat member of the family. <laughs> and I hated him. And he's always bragging oh. about how he has ties to the he, KGB. Yeah, KGB he, adjacent. Yeah. <laughs> he's he's like, I was an analyst. <laughs> he's the whole fucking reason this thing went sideways in the first place. Because if he had just read her the diary, she would have learned what had happened and totally bypassed all of these fucking mob people. Yeah, well, he's a piece of shit. I mean, he's a I, piece of shit. I, that dinner scene, like, I... Again, I hadn't seen this he's movie just, in a while. He's just, he just wants what's best for her. No, no, yeah. no, no, no. Listen, hold he's on He's like, hey, that's There's the whole this... reason your baby Dude, died no, no, inside no, no. of you. Well, you know. Sorry, did I ruin it? Yeah. 
I was going to lead up to that, but that's okay. No, there was another one of these dark moments in this movie where they're at dinner and they're like arguing. He's like, well, you have a black boyfriend who's not here. Anyway. They, always, <laughs> they always run. And he's, she's like, what the hell are you talking about? Yeah. And he's like, well, that is why your baby died inside you. You're not supposed to mix race. And I was like, <laughs> like audibly, I was it's like, oh, horrible. shit. Yeah, it's horrible. Like, it was like, it took me aback. I'm like, holy God, I can't believe I freaking said that. Yeah. That was terrible. He's such an ass. And at the same time, like her reaction, I was like, that's all you're going to do? You're just going to walk away? Like, yeah. I think I would have fucking pummeled my uncle yeah. had he said some shit like that to me. He was a piece of shit. Especially if you had that neck tattoo. Right? <laughs> like, don't fuck with me. She needed a neck Listen, tattoo. You, you need to get rid of that because you're going to go to jail. If you don't <laughs> yeah, you look like you just got out of prison. Yeah. <laughs> and then, then it'll wash off in prison and you'll get oh, shit. called out as a poser. <laughs> Remember that time I got pulled over outside of my son's school and I was like yeah. devastated the entire day? Oh, yeah, yeah. Let him come for me now. Oh, that, <laughs> not with you know this. What, honestly, not with this Listen, neck tattoo. If you had had that when the cop pulled you over, that thing would have I would have gone to jail. Different. No, I would have gone to jail. completely <laughs> different. <laughs> You would have had your ass he ran. Would've, he would have been uh, like, plate oh, checked. oh, shit. Um, yeah, don't do not do that. Also, here's 20 bucks. <laughs> yeah, he'd, be, he'd be like, what strip club you work at? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I was really surprised. Uh, that moment was a shock moment for me when he said that at the dinner table. I, I literally, audibly, I'm watching it. I'm like, oh, like right? I was taken aback. Yeah. Holy shit, that, that guy's an asshole. Um, that was a great moment as far as it's just like shock value. I wasn't expecting that, but Vigo as this, this freaking undercover KGB agent who's trying to infiltrate the mob. I was in dude. Like I'm sold hook, line and sinker. He's maneuvering like a political chess player. Mm -hmm. He's over there like messing with people's heads. He's trying to get in good with the father. The son's a piece of shit. And he's just like, well, it's okay. I'm just here to protect you. You know, also he can fix motorcycles. Yeah. I mean, he's, you know, the mailman used to have one just like it back mm -hmm. in the day. It's got uh, the water in it. <laughs> that was a joke. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's so cool. Yeah. He's so freaking cool. Literally, really. he's the coolest person. Yeah. yeah. He never loses his calm. Never. Never loses dude, his temper. Dude, that scene where he's cool, he's, calm, and collected the he's whole He's like movie. chopping fingers off. And he's like, mm, you make no big deal. Yeah. This that scene like where he's processing the uh, guy who they assassinated. Yeah. Processing. Processing. Which means you're just getting chopping. rid of the fucking identification taking all the teeth out yeah. and chopping the fingers off and, yeah. he, and he's talking to the guys there there's like three or two or three people I'm going to listen to my podcast you should go <laughs> go get some food <laughs> what's funny about uh, he reminds me of a friend of mine that I used to work with really? Yeah. really? no no for real his name's Igor he's from Moldova get the fuck out no no I'm not joking bro for real and, does he have a cool neck and, tattoo like um, me? he might have some tattoos um, but um, no he have stars my on friend, his chest? My, well, all I'm saying is is my friend Igor um He's very calm, cool, mm -hmm. and collected all the time. Never raises his voice, never goes below a certain level. And he always talks, you know, like this is, everything's going to be okay, you know. Is, and um, very similar. And and um, just, he always kind of cracks me up the way his demeanor is. He's your stereotypical Russian guy, you know, <laughs> and, he, and he likes his vodka. And, mm -hmm. you, you know, I see, I see like people think like these are like, stereotypical depictions of these no, people. No, that's legit. But yeah. man, I not, worked with, not in the case of my friend, because they, they nailed this shit. It's I worked wild. in security, God, it had to have been 10 years ago now. I worked in security over at the at mm -hmm. the casinos and uh, I had a another security agent. His name was Potapov. Mm -hmm. And uh, same thing. He he carried around like three or four packs of like Russian yeah. cigarettes. Mm -hmm. And he's like, these Russian cigarettes don't have any filters <laughs> on. It's just straight tobacco. He's like, your freaking American yeah, filters are bullshit. Yeah. It, Exactly the same tough way. Tough people, right? Yeah. yeah tough as tough. nails, dude. You, you know what's funny is none of the actors who played Russians in this were Russian. movie were Russian. Yes. <laughs> uh, they, they, they were all like, you know, just look at Vincent Cassell who played uh, Kirill. Mm -hmm. like, you can't find a more French looking guy than that dude. <laughs> and he's out there playing a Russian. <laughs> he's good at playing a sleazeball though. Yeah. Like every For movie I, yeah. sure. Every movie I see him in, he's yeah, like he's, some he's kind of a sleazy that, guy. that weasley face. Yeah. You know? Yeah, for Makes sure. Makes you want to smack it. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, yeah, With I your kinda... big Russian dick. <laughs> <laughs> wow. He probably would, he like would that. love it. <laughs> I was going to say. Um, so, but anyway, um, the, so uh, you know Orphan is the new black? Uh, Tatiana Mansley? Mas you mean Orphan Black? Maslin. Yeah. Orphan is the or new or black. Yeah, well, like, the it's not Orange is the new black. Yeah, yeah. It's orphan orphan black. black. Tatiana <laughs> Maslany. Mm -hmm. um, so she did the voiceover for. Uh, the 14 year old Russian girl. She did. So like whenever you hear her voice in, in the diary, mm -hmm. when he's, when Naomi Watts is reading the diary, 
that's her voice. I think this was like her first big movie that she was involved in, even huh. though she never appears in it. God, she's so good. Voice. Yeah, she's really good. That's cool. Have you seen Orphan Black? I have not. Amazing. Okay, well, I'll have to check She it plays out. every character in it. And she, nice. does, she does a good Russian accent, too. She does. <laughs> Sesta. Yeah, se, sestra. <laughs> anyway, uh, the processing scene is one of my favorite ones where he's like, uh, did you finish cutting his hair? Cut his fingers and yeah, cutting his fingers yeah. off. And he's like, you might want to leave this. And he pulls the guy's <laughs> wallet out and he's like, did you finish cutting his hair? You uh -huh. might want the 650 yeah, for the haircut. And he, and he starts yeah. laughing and everybody else is like, oh my God, this guy's serious. And he's <laughs> like, oh, it's kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> that was a joke. So, so, uh, I'm very funny. So Viggo Morkinson actually based his character on um, Vladimir Putin. Yeah. <laughs> He, oh, I uh, can see that. Of yeah, course he did. Yeah, he he would watch Vladimir Putin on on TV, like doing his press conferences and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And he'd be like, "Man, nothing gets to that guy." He's like, "I'm going to play it just like Putin." So like he's just yeah. playing Vladimir Putin. In the I movie. wouldn't mess with that dude. I ain't gonna lie. Um, <laughs> I mean, Vigo <laughs> Frankenstein is great. In, in this whole movie, you know, so Vigo Frankenstein. Yeah, it's just. Uh, uh, it's, he, he plays a cool Frank Vigo. Like, okay, let's. Yeah. All right, we got to talk about the the. Um, the naked oh the scene this the scene the most awkward action wait, scene wait, ever wait. the spa assassin <laughs> the, the spa assassin. See, I, I, I told jude before we sat down to watch this movie i was like just so you know this has the most awkward action scene you're okay. ever gonna see i wish that you movie. would stop telling me these things <laughs> so this is freaking scene dude so vigo mortensen gets framed uh for the assassination of this yeah, character so they, they give him a promotion they right. give him the tattoos that look just like kirill's mm -hmm. um the, the mob stars. the mob boss Star his son yeah, yeah. so they give Star him the, the stars he he goes to the spa and like some assassins come in and they're like oh you're that Kirill dude yeah. and they try to kill him and he's like but this naked. is not your day yeah and he he murders the crap out of two people completely naked mm -hmm. yeah you see everything, everything. it's, it's <laughs> a it, very like, awkward scene it's super awkward mm -hmm. but also like fuck that was badass i don't yeah. know dude it was yeah. like if you're he's at a six it I'm sorry, I can't talk. He's at an extreme disadvantage in that situation. Oh, yeah. And he still comes out on top. Uh, <laughs> I got Jude on that one. You just rolled your eyes. Um, <laughs> no, but it's... it's I, I'm just trying to picture this. this it's funny. Well, that that this, made me remember when they did a 69 in the last movie. Oh, in the freaking history of violence. Yeah. I, I'm just weird. trying to picture this uh, production meeting with uh, Vigo Mortenstern. Right. And he's sitting there and... Uh, it's like, okay, so you want me to be naked the whole time? I don't understand why. Well, like, you know. take all your clothes off. It's like, no, full frontal? Full. No, yes. no, if, no. It actually, I honestly, like. You want me to shave or? It made me, it made me laugh because all I could think of was Norseman when Freya is like wearing the cock necklace. Uh -huh. And Orm is like, those are not normal size cocks. <laughs> and then you see him in this movie and I'm like. We're never going to get through a show without. Norseman references. Oh, would you again, calm your jets? That's pretty funny. Mm -hmm. It's good stuff. Man. I'm into it. <laughs> Did you not get the reference? Please continue your, yes. your thoughts. No, I'm done now. He took, my, he took the wind out of my sails. <laughs> so, uh, freaking... I, I want to point out that the guy who directed History of Violence, David Cronenberg, also directed this movie. This is also a David Cronenberg movie. Yeah. Oh, holy crap. And uh, Alex, do you want to take a guess as to who wrote this movie? Is this somebody I'm supposed to know? <laughs> I so can't the, think. the writer of this movie is Stephen Knight, the <gasps> showrunner of both um, Peaky Blinders and C. Nice. The guy oh. who created both those, those series. Wow. And, and nice. So like this was one of his early films. And uh, so it's him and David Cronenberg uh, making this movie. And, you know, coming off of History of Violence, Cronenberg had a relationship with Vigo. And so he cast him in this role. And um, the entire movie is is basically like Cronenberg and Vigo's relationship, like working relationship, um, being like like Cronenberg, like I, I want to showcase Vigo in, in this film, and <laughs> he showcases v, Vigo. Yeah. Uh, Vigo <laughs> owns every single frame of, of this movie. Yeah. But like um, when it came came to that scene, so originally. It was going to be like he was wearing a towel the whole time, mm. and they were like, oh, "That's just that's just not, not realistic." Not very realistic, yeah. yeah. And and they were like, "Vigo, how would you feel if you just did it naked?" And he was like, "I'd be good with that." <laughs> <laughs> Props but, to him, dude. God I, damn, sure. I just want to be on a set with Vigo all of a sudden. <laughs> I'd be good with that. Yeah, dude, um, v yeah. Vigo like really researches his roles. Like you know, like every movie that we've talked about so far, like he, you know, he went to like the Indian reservations and like did history uh, on, on like his character and. Mm -hmm. And um, with this movie, he actually like 
uh, got a translator and went and talked to like actual Russian mobsters. And, and his portrayal was so authentic that like, um, like when he'd go out after filming, like, uh, or if they were on a break, you know, he'd have all his tattoos on, he'd go to like a local bar and everyone would think he was like the real deal, like stay the fuck away from him. Scatter! Yeah. That's what they're, that's what they're gonna think when I go to Starbucks today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to Whole Foods after this. <laughs> like, well, oh, well one of the interesting things about this movie is that so the Russian mob never carries guns with them because it's too easy to get caught. Mm -hmm. So they always have like knives, like like that's like their weapon of choice. And so there are no guns in this movie, like at all. All the violence, all the fighting is done with like knives. Mm -hmm. But one of the interesting things about this film to me is just like the nuance in every scene. Like there's that scene where Vincent Cassell's character, Kirill, uh, forces Vigo to have sex with like this Ukrainian prostitute. And this girl, like she obviously didn't want to be there. Well, and, she's and, forced sex later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's basically like, you know, white slavery. And um, you can tell that she's just barely hanging on by a thread. And when Vigo has, is done having sex with her, she's kind of lying on the bed and she's like singing herself like a lullaby to try to comfort her from like what just happened. Mm -hmm. And Vigo um, starts talking to her and, you know, the interesting thing about that is he starts speaking to her in Ukrainian as opposed to like like Russian. Mm -hmm. And that's not something that like I picked up on the first time I, I I saw this movie. Like I had to, you know, read about it. But like little things like that where he's like talking to her in her native language and he tells her to like, you know, hold on, things are gonna get better. And he's asking her very specific things about herself. Yeah. Well, if you guys notice that um, later on, Krill says something like, would you believe the police came and took that exact girl and asked for her by name? Yeah. And that was a hint that he's actually working with Scotland mm -hmm. Yard. And I'm like, I, I didn't realize that until I, I watched this movie twice this week. And I was like watching it again. And I'm like, oh shit, he talked to her specifically, yeah. asked her by name and then reported and that then to Scotland Yard. And then he saved her. And saved her, yeah. yeah. And, and, I'm like, and that body that he got rid of at the beginning of the movie, he actually put a message in, mm -hmm. in there uh, on, on the body so that he knew Scotland Yard would find it. And that was how he was able to check in with them and let them know what was going on. Yeah. So like, there's a lot of like different layers of, you know, stuff that that's happening in this movie, especially on Vigo's end of things. Cause for a while there, you think he killed like uh, Naomi Watts's uncle. And it turns out that like- He you just know, put him in a hotel. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Five star hotel. I like that he was like, um, it kind of validates his whole like I worked for the KGB thing because when when Naomi Watts confronts him about that he's like it's okay he's old school he knows right. how it works he's like oh so like it almost was like yeah he maybe he totally did work for the well, KGB well, well, he was an analyst for the yeah KGB. yeah he was, he's like a Jack Ryan <laughs> yeah. Yeah. it was cool it was Which just a nice moment makes me think that like the the neck thing that he did at his uncle was like a an yeah, undercover dude. like don't worry I'm gonna put you up in a five star hotel. <laughs> <laughs> So don't start doing that to people thinking you're going to give them a favor. Yeah, I know. I probably shouldn't. <laughs> They're no, going to be like, where the fuck is my weekend? But I remember that being in like every trailer for this uh, movie. And really? That's the most iconic yeah. shot from this film. And I don't even know why. I don't know what it means. It is not the most iconic thing that happened for it, me. It, it, just lo it just looks badass. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah. Uh, it's, no, it's, uh, really, it's really like... Aggressive. I mean, he that he stabs the shit out of his neck and then he stabs the fuck out of the air at you. <laughs> it's aggressive. What were you gonna say, V? I was to say uh, Vigo's dick is the most uh, iconic, iconic part of this movie. Vegas movie for sure. Okay, I'm glad you feel that way. Yeah, it's yeah. just, it's just the way it is. how often did you look at it in that scene? You couldn't take your eyes off. <laughs> I, I, I was, I was like, I was deep into uh, making buttons. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck am I watching? Oh, it's Viggo Mortensen's dick fighting. Okay, whatever. Yeah, his yeah. balls are just flashing yeah. in the air. It's a normal sized dick. No big deal. Thank you, Jude. <laughs> Not the only one who does Norseman things. <laughs> God. Anyway, um, I, this is I love this movie. I loved it. It's this so movie. freaking cool. Yeah, it was and really I, good. I don't have a problem watching it more than once. I think uh, honestly, it gets better and better each time I watch it. The, the subtleties come out a little bit more. It's like a it's like a nice whiskey, you know. You sip on yeah. it, kind of digest a little bit, get it in like your palate. A, like a vodka. Like a well, vodka's just potatoes. Uh. <laughs> it's just potatoes. potatoes. Yeah. It's just potatoes. Don't look at me like that. <laughs> your ass is just potatoes. <laughs> Okay. This is true. Uh, final thoughts. Give it a rating, Vader. Uh, I'm going to go three stars. That's solid. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a good watch. It's fun. Right it's on. a dark movie. It's very dark. It's a dark movie. It's not a feel good movie. Um, but I like mobster movies and um, I haven't watched a lot of Russian mobster movies. And 
this is a good one. It's good. Yeah. I mean, the, the story's dark. Don't get me wrong. It's kind of depressing and, and, and um, it is what it is. It's a, but it's a good movie. I like it. It's good stuff. Right on. Jude? Um, if you see me on the street with much more visible tattoos than I have in um, recent years, this movie is the reason. <laughs> I'm so into myself right now. <laughs> I have a lot of fake tattoos that I want to be real. <laughs> um, I really like this movie. Um, I'm I'm upset because I watched this one first. So like the rest of the week was kind of a disappointment oh, okay. to me. Um, but I, I really liked it. And I thought Vigo was fucking fantastic in it. Yeah. Uh, so for a Vigo Mortensen starring role, I give this four stars. This was amazing. He was he was fantastic in it. Everything that he did, he was totally believable as a Russian mobster. Mm -hmm. Loved it. Cool. Kadish? Yeah, this was my favorite of the week as well. Um, really solid movie. Um, it's a movie you have to pay attention to. Yeah. And uh, the performances were all freaking great. The direction was great. The story was great. Um, I give it a solid three Vigo ball sacks out of five. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's well, ten there's, balls, dude. There's a, yeah. <laughs> no, six balls. There's, there's something six we balls. didn't talk about, though, which yeah, was in, 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 in regard to the, the tattoos, they said, like, oh, this dead body that we found, it has tattoos on its knees, which signifies that, like, you're a king in the you mob don't. and you don't bow to anyone. Nope, and I yeah. thought that was really cool. That's all legit, it's too. probably mm -hmm. a real thing yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. that I'm just, like, a dummy being like, that's fucking cool. Well, well <laughs> but, th th there's this whole scene where they have Vigo kind of stripped down to his skivvies and sit in front of, like, the, the you know, hierarchy. Yeah. yeah, well, I mean, that's the, the panel of the Russian, like, That's basically, like, like, an Italian mob. That's when he gets yeah. made. And, and the, yeah, so. like, they tell, they ask him a questions about all of his tattoos. And so every tattoo has, like, a story. And he, like to, and he has to denounce his family and his so father and his mine. mother. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. And I, I'm pretty sure that's all legit. Probably. Like he He's, went and talked to these, like Kadesh was saying, he went and talked to these uh, Russian monsters mm -hmm. and was like getting the nitty gritty on mm -hmm. how everything worked. And I think it translated fantastic. Yeah. Um, did you give it a rating? You said how many balls? What was it? Three ball sacks. <laughs> Three ball sacks. Um, Three flapping in the wind ball sacks. <laughs> wow. I'm going to give uh, this. I'm with Jude. This is a four star movie for me. I freaking love this movie. It's so good. I watch it anytime. You know, if I see it, if it's on, or if I feel like I need some Vigo more, you know, some Vigo in my life. This some is Vigo. Vigo. This is the movie I turn to. I like, I mean, Vigo. I love Lord of the Rings. Don't get me wrong. Lord of the Rings is fantastic. But the, if I want like Vigo Mortensen, Eastern Promises. Yeah. 100%. And uh, to tell you the truth, the way this movie ends, where he actually usurps the, the leader of the Russian mob in London like, I want to see the rest of that story, man. I, know, right? I want more. Well, there there was a sequel plan, but it kind of just died on the vine, I guess. Damn, dude. Um, Had you seen this before? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. This was all three of these were a first watch for me. Me too. So I was very pleasantly surprised uh, I, with this one. I had seen uh, Eastern Promise. This is the only one I think. What was the first one? Oh, Hidalgo. No, I saw Hidalgo too. So okay. I've seen the only one I didn't see was East, it was um, uh, History of Violence. violence. But this movie is great. I love it. I would highly suggest if you're into monster movies, if you're if you just like good damn movies, go check out Eastern Promises. It's uh, it's awesome. All right, that's it. That's it for the today's podcast. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe. Let us know your favorite Viggo Mortensen movie. Is it Vanishing Point? We tried to watch it, but we couldn't find it anywhere. Yeah, so if I'd you, still like to watch that. Yeah, comment below what your favorite Viggo Mortensen movie is, and um, Lord of the Rings don't count. Yeah. That's cheating. That's cheating. <laughs> <laughs> huge, huge fan of uh, Amigo Morton Hoople. Okay. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> Morton Hoople? Yeah. That's, that's awesome. my favorite. Yeah. That's a good one. Good one to end on. Uh, Vader, where can they find you on the social? Buddy? <laughs> you find me at uh, Matt Vader 74 on the, uh, the Twitter and the YouTube and Facebook and YouTube and, and our Discord and other, all kinds of places. Cool. Yeah. Thanks, Thank you, man. sir. Jude, where can they find you at? You can find me at the bottom of a bottle of vodka. <laughs> <laughs> or at I am Jude Juju on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Uh, but uh, I never use Twitter. Uh, you can find me uh, on Facebook at the Salty Nerd Podcast on Facebook. All right. Kadish. You can find me at Matthew Kadish, K-A-D-I-S-H on Twitter. Kadishbooks.com takes you to our Amazon page. 
And uh, also, please go to saltynerd.com forward slash rate uh, and leave us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts. We're trying to get up to 200 five-star ratings on there. So anytime you can hop on over to Apple Podcasts, give us a rating. You don't even have to write a review. Just hit those stars. And uh, we're trying to get 200 of those so we can be an accredited movie reviewer on Rotten Tomatoes. So we'd appreciate all the help. Come talk to us on Discord. We love talking with you guys. It's a free thing that we're doing. I mean, there are some behind a paywall for um, Patreon members, but uh, just come and chat with us. We love talking to you about like the movies that we watch and the shows that we do. So come on over there and talk to us. We're in it every day. That's right. And on Monday nights, we do live watch parties of our uh, Patreon only episodes. We're doing Buffy the Vampire Slayer this week mm -hmm. or this month. Uh, so if you're into Buffy, head over to Discord on Monday nights and then we'll be there watching the, the TV show. Uh, all right, guys, I'm Alex, the Salty Nerd. You guys can catch me on our Discord app, like we already said. Um, but if we, if you want to go the extra mile, go to saltynerdclub.com, sign up for the club membership. You guys get a ton of extra content. We really do appreciate the support. Um, and that's it, guys. Thank you guys so much. I'm going to keep these on for a little while. So. Me too. <laughs> Stay salty, my friends. We'll see you next week.